This is a bit of a response to Fred's most recent response to me. And Fred was picking up some of these issues about Alan Watts and Alan Watts and his distinction of, or his suggestion that we came out of the world, we didn't come into it. And this notion that you're something it is doing, you're a place and moment of it, rather than a thing upon another thing. W one of the ways that I would maybe go into this, Fred, is to m maybe just begin with this common expression that people at first pass use to try to address some of the dynamic or the changing nature of reality. One of the basic uh, phrases you hear people say sometimes is they say, hey, look, things change. So people say, they say, hey, look, things change. And when they say, hey, look, things change, it's as if they're realizing that change is something that happens, but they're still caught with the notion of there being things that are changing. Right? Again, so it's almost as if people are moving out of a belief that the world is made up of things that are continuously in a state of changing, but there are still basically there are things there. Now, if you compare that to the statement of someone who says, change things, yeah, not change things, like get out there and make some changes, but if I say change things, and if I say there really is one constant, it's this life principle, this, the origin of the world, as uh, Douglas Harding would say it, and then this origin, which is consciousness, which is the life force, which is everything going on in its unfolding. But when I say that, um, that change things, I'm saying that this massive, complicated event of change actually releases forth these things which now seem to be there, and it, it really changes the backdrop or the ground of what we take as the assumption. See, I mean, I think when I say that uh, things change, I seem to be operating on a ground of thinghood, recognizing the changing of those things. But if I say change things, and I start to realize that there's just change that occasionally, momentarily produces these, what appear to be things, I think we can see, again, how I am a place and moment of the world. I'm something it's doing. I've come out of the world. I didn't come into it. I've literally, not only have I come out of the world, I've literally come out of another person. But even though I've come out of another person and I feel myself to be separate from the world, it's like I'm over here and wor the world is over there, the I think the, the difficulty is that people, you know, they, they quickly assume some sort of overdrawn autonomy, some overdrawn independence. Now, it's not to underestimate how much they are independent, and they do have choice and decision and freedom and autonomy and, uh, of various degrees at various levels, but at all kinds of other levels, they're, you know, we're, sh we're shaky bags of skin that have the shape they have due to the atmospheric pressure and the gravitational force and the the light that is of this sun. I mean, there's just countless, countless factors that are unseen that give shape and form to our bones, to our, our bodily structure. And I wanted to respond to this too. Somebody in my most recent video, I thought this was very naive. When I gave the little comment about how I'm suspicious of these Star Trek fantasies, like we're going to go gallivant around the cosmos and we're going to have our own uh, kind of gravitational systems and life support systems and everything in little ships while we're going around. And a person said to me, I was being told that I was not recognizing that we're natural to all of the cosmos. This is a person who doesn't realize the utter naturalness of death. Death is what is natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm.